do you know that you are getting the maximum rental income that you can possibly get? And do you know how to handle that security deposit at the end of the lease down the road so that you don't make costly mistakes? That's what we're talking about today. My name is Sue Ritchie and I am the principal broker of Ritchie Property Management in Reston, Virginia. We handle about 700 rental properties and I've said that over and over on my channel. And these are some of the questions that we get from new owners about how do I get the most money for my property? How do you actually determine what the rental value is? And then how do you handle a security deposit? Because a lot of people are worried about somebody trashing their property. So these are a couple of the topics that come up over and over again. I wanted to talk about them today and hopefully that'll help you when you handle your rents and your deposits. Okay, so let's first talk about rents. Obviously, the rent is the biggest income source for any landlord. There are other little things, but we wanna make sure that we can get the most rent for our clients. And as a landlord, you wanna get the most that you can, obviously. But how do you determine what the right rental amount is? Some people make the mistake starting to calculate the rent based on their mortgage and their expenses with the assumption that the rent really should cover all of these things and more, and often it doesn't. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of a standard townhome here in Northern Virginia. It's a nice house townhome valued at about 530,000. And let's say that someone has a mortgage making up these numbers of about $2,000 a month for their principal and interest. And then let's say they have insurance of maybe a couple hundred dollars, taxes, another couple hundred dollars and so on. And they think that's how they calculate the rent. That's just plain wrong. We even had someone contact us recently who had that mindset. And on top of it, their friends, I guess they're really good friends who know a lot about real estate, told them that they should really increase the rent by an additional $100 or $200 just in case things go wrong. Really? What is going to happen instead is that they're going to get zero because no one is even going to bother to rent their place or look at their place. And as a landlord, you should have a budget. You should be budgeting to have your own reserves. This is what we all always tell our owners, make sure that you have a buffer in case things go wrong, things go sideways. There's always something that's gonna break. There's unexpected things that happen. You have to have the money. You can't expect your tenant to kick in money for an oops fund just in case. I have no idea where these friends got this information, but oh well. Okay, so that's not how you do it. Forget about all of that. The reality is that tenants could care less what your mortgage is, what expenses you have. They're only going to be paying attention to what the market rent is, okay? They are seeing other properties that are similar. Maybe they're seeing them at a much lower price and guess which one they're going to rent, not yours. <laughs> so tenants are pretty savvy these days and they know what's out there they are going to be looking for the best value. That means the best home, good location for a good price. Your rental rate has to be competitive, competitive in the market that you're in right now. Okay, so the way to figure this out and how to figure out what your home would rent for is to look into your local market and look at other comparable properties that have rented. That is the key word here is rented. You can do a search online. You can look for similar types of properties, look on places like Zillow and other kinds of sites and find other homes that are similar square footage. See what they rented for. Don't just look at homes that are currently active on the market. Look at actually the ones that rented. People make this mistake all the time. Look for ones in the past several months. Again, same square footage, similar updates with a similar location. Those are all the things that other people are going to be looking at because they're looking in the same general area right? Okay, so active listings don't really mean anything because other than the fact that they are your competition right now, but the ones that are way overpriced, they're not going to rent. So you don't really want to base your price on those. So when you do your rental analysis, you might even want to contact a local property manager like us because we rent hundreds of homes and we are very up to speed on what's happening in the current market. And we can advise on a good rental price. It's not a bad thing to have a good relationship and build a relationship with a local property management company or a realtor who really knows rentals because there's a big difference between sales and rentals and these people may be able to help you down the road so don't hesitate to get their help now and build a relationship okay now once you determine the right rental price don't get stuck on that 
Markets are fluid, and because another similar property rented, let's say, for $2,000 a month a couple months ago, the market may have shifted and things move fast. So right now might be a very different picture than before. And if you were to get hung up on that $2,000 price, you might just be hurting yourself by not getting it rented, okay? Let's look at another example. This is something we try to tell our owners over and over again, because people can be very stubborn. You know, you know that your friend got a certain price, but if you just stick to that rental price, you're we're gonna be sitting on a property that's not getting any money, okay? And we know that the longer that a home sits on the market, the less you're gonna get in the end. So think about it this way. If you reduce that property by just $100, and now the rent is $1,900, then over a course of a year, yes, you may be foregoing $1,200, $100 times 12 months, but if you leave that property vacant for even two months because you're stuck on this price and it's overpriced, it's costing you now $4,000, which is $2,000 dollars per month just because you want to get that much money if it sits there and does nothing what good is it right sometimes landlords can just be so stubborn trying to get the rent that they think they should get instead of what actually the market is going to give them and what the market is telling you so pay attention get the advice of a professional property manager to help you okay it's going to be worth it because in the long run it's likely to help get you rented faster and for more money okay now we've talked about rents let's move on let's start talking about deposits. Your typical deposit is a security deposit, which you always want to collect with every single lease. Don't ever leave that out. Typically, a security deposit is going to be at a minimum equivalent to about a month's rent, okay? Many people don't like to have it equal exactly a month's rent. We do, but sometimes they think that causes some confusion because people, tenants may think that this is gonna be used for the last month's rent. That's definitely a no-no. So you also don't see generally security deposits greater than two months' rents because that's usually not allowed in many jurisdictions. You always want to be very clear in the lease that the deposit does not replace the last month's rent because many tenants will get to the end of the lease. They might just say, hey, can you use my security deposit for the last month's rent? Your answer should always be absolutely no. If you do that, then when that ten tenant moves out and there's any kind of damage, you have absolutely no money to withhold, take care of that damage and do the repairs. You always want the rent to be the rent and the deposits to be the deposits. So sometimes landlords want a non-refundable deposit, but we don't generally do that for security deposits. Remember, deposits are highly regulated, so make sure you know what the rules are in your area. Okay, another kind of deposit is related to pets, pet deposit. So you'll see that often in a lease. We charge an additional pet deposit in our leases on top of the normal security deposit. In our case, we charge $500 pet deposit and more, a little bit more if there are additional pets. Sometimes landlords want to have a non-refundable pet deposit. They say the pet's going to cause more wear and tear on the property, so I want it to be non-refundable. Okay, I totally get that. I get where they're coming from, and yes, there is going to be some extra wear and tear for sure. But I was talking with a property owner recently about this subject, and there's definitely some logic to having a pet to be a refundable deposit, and it comes down to psychology. So if you have a non-refundable pet deposit, then the mindset of that tenant is like, well, I'm not gonna get this money back anyway, so why do I care? Who cares what the pet does if they pee here or scratch this, but with a refundable pet deposit, a tenant has an incentive to turn that property back over to you in good condition because you're holding their $500 and they want it back. So they're going to do what they can do to take care of the property, make sure their pet is, you know, respectful of the property and so that there isn't extra damage because they absolutely want that money back. It just comes down to psychology. So for us, I think it makes a lot of sense to have that deposit be a refundable deposit. Okay. Now it's important to also know your laws when it comes to security deposits and when they need to be returned to a tenant. In Virginia, the law states that the security deposit is due back to the tenant within 45 days of the end of the tenancy. Once that tenant moves out, it's important that you act quickly and do your move out inspection and compare that to the move in inspection that you did prior to the tenant occupying the property. Now you can determine exactly whether there are actual damages, okay? Remember, you can only charge for actual damages, not normal wear and tear. And if you're not not sure of the difference between damages and normal wear and tear, check out this video right here. Once you're sure what the actual damages are, you're going to need to send your tenant a statement itemizing the deductions and the charges, and you'll need to show them estimates or receipts from vendors, okay, for the work before you return the deposit. You're going to also want to ask them for proof 
prove that they have they paid their final utility bill so those bills don't come to you later okay and one last tip and something that we do when we send that refund check back to the tenant you want to be sure to write something like this on the check I can't remember exactly what our wording is but it's something like cashing this check is acceptance and agreement to the final distribution on the security deposit from your lease now I'm not a lawyer so don't quote me on anything specific but you get the gist of what I'm talking about basically what we're trying to say is essentially by writing that language on there you're saying tenant is saying when they make that they actually deposit it okay I'm accepting this money I'm not gonna come back after you now there's no guarantee that they won't but you know tenants don't like when you make deductions from their security deposit so be sure you you do all the necessary steps but just writing something like that is kind of like acknowledgement on their heart that they're they're taking this money and we're kind of done you know okay so bottom line is be smart about your rental prices it's important because that's your biggest source of income right you want to get the most money you can so know your market know what other properties have rented for get the help of anybody you that could help you just do that because you'll get the most money that you possibly can and when it comes to deposit take the time to know the laws follow them to a T will definitely save you headache and money down the road so thanks for watching hopefully this was helpful please share it with someone you know that could benefit from this information and if you haven't subscribed I hope you will subscribe and I will see you next time